Mary, oh wait, it's not Christmas yet. It's still Halloween. I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. It's not season 9 yet, so this still has to be season 8. Holiday special. Best gift ever. Uh, no it wasn't. You guys released this before Halloween. You can't release the Heartswarming special when you should have been releasing a Nightmare Night special. I'm thinking this still goes back to the whole thing. Apparently Hasbro and Discovery are having a tiff right now about this because Hasbro's actually apparently trying to get the license away from Discovery because Discovery only apparently only had the license because of what happened to the hub and how that all worked out for them. Well, anyways, I disapprove of the timing and we had to wait until after Nightmare Night to watch it, even though it's still way too early. Yeah, it's like this basic Vine video I was on Tumblr where it has this guy laying in bed and he hears strange music. He goes, what is that? Keeps, it's getting louder. What's the date? He looks over at his clock. November 1st. No! He looks at his door and it bursts open and Christmas music starts playing. Some stores start playing it in August. I won't name names, but I've heard it. It's like, whatever happened to Thanksgiving? I remember when Thanksgiving was a big thing. It had its own TV specials and everything. It did. And now nobody cares about Thanksgiving. It's all about the Black Friday sales. Yeah, I can understand, like, not wanting to celebrate it because... The more you look at history, the more you realize, like, yeah, it actually wasn't really that kind of thing. So, yeah, it's got some dark history behind it. I'm like, I don't care. I'm celebrating the modern version of it where you give thanks. And hang out with your family and eat lots of food. Yeah, not my favorite holiday. It was one of mine because of the food eating thing. I like eating lots of good food, especially when I have an excuse to eat lots of very tasty, very unhealthy food. Lots of it, I'm telling you. I was one of those people who ended up with, like, comas after Thanksgiving. But actually, onto the holiday special, and it was a nice episode. Very pleasant. So it was a very enjoyable episode. I should say special, because it was technically the length of two episodes. It was really nice, and... Enjoyable. The characters are actually in character. Discord wasn't that much of an uh, horses behind, so he wasn't that bad. Though when you look at it, it was like even Rumor Dash points out like you did what to what. <laughs> the only reason you're getting away with this is because we're not gonna make her upset because of what you did, which is basically summarizing Rainbow Dash's opinion on the whole thing. I also like Spike's gif. Very awesome. For a second there, I thought it was the guitar, but no, he was actually building a guitar to sing the song. But he didn't come up with the song until after he couldn't apparently build the guitar, I'm guessing. Because also, I would have like classified him as the gift because, man, he was shiny. He was very sparkly after he fell asleep with all the glitter. Also, he went through multiple gifts because when you saw him trying to craft things... Last thing we saw him trying to do was put glue and glitter on an umbrella. And that reminds me of pudding. <laughs> that face is most definitely a meme. Kind of like that face that Starlight Glimmer made when she was like, tell me about your plan. And we have a new saying in our vernacular. Apparently now the new extreme level is Twily Nanas. <laughs> You've gone Twily Nanas. <laughs> They've gone plaid. No, sir. It's worse. How is it worse? They've gone twily nanas. Oh my god. No wonder everything's sparkly and purple. So, this was very interesting in that it's a very modern take on the stresses of the holiday season. How everyone buys their gifts last minute. I usually make them when I get the chance. Because... If you're a good friend of mine and I have the time, expect a digital holiday card or a piece of paper with a drawing on it going, thank you, happy holidays. Usually a little bit more personalized than that, but I'm giving a generalization. But it's that whole time thing, which is why I start my shopping in January usually. You shop all year round. You're like, oh, this would be a great gift for someone. Yes, and then even when I decided to make gifts, I got them all out of the way months ago. I'm like, oh, 
I made them all. Now what? <laughs> Except for this one, because when I asked everyone for colors, somebody said something ridiculous, and I need to actually order some fabric. Though that also reminds me about this wonderful, like, short video of, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it, something, Adam Ruins Everything. Mm -hmm. And he talked about the actual economics of gift giving and how it actually doesn't work. Because even though you value something highly, when you give that as a gift, if the person doesn't value it highly, its value actually drops. This is why it's difficult to buy gifts for other people, because you really need to know what they would like, what they would use, what they don't have five of already. Thank you, puts the toaster off to the side. Thank you, puts the next toaster off to the side. Wedding gifts and baby showers, woohoo! Well, those have registries, so it's basically when people don't use the registry that trouble. I've only been to one wedding, and I've never actually been to a baby shower of my friends, so. Guys usually aren't invited. Letting people know that I don't actually have actual experience, at least not a lot, with those. <laughs> I just know standard joke is, I get five toasters. And just how stressed everyone was. Okay, when you were originally going to all buy gifts for each other, shouldn't you have kind of been working on it a little sooner? Because this isn't your first hearth swarming. Mm -hmm. They should have all, they should have at least had one of them. Actually, they did. Because didn't Pinkie Pie already have like hats picked out for everyone? Pinkie Pie was all set, but she was the only one who was all set. Miss Super Planner Twilight Sparkle should have been all set. Probably several months in advance. And already wrapped, and the only problem is she doesn't remember where she put the list of where she hid the gifts. <laughs> Or she forgot to... No, that wouldn't be Twilight. I was going to say she forgot to label them, but that wouldn't be Twilight either. They would be specifically labeled with very nice handwriting. Or horn writing. Uh, would it be called horn writing because she would use her magic to do it? They covered that in the, the translation of Star Swirl's journal. Nah. Oh, he had terrible... He, they actually said horn writing, didn't they? Yes, they did. Also, I like how they kind of got Starlight out of the way so that this was only a main six gift exchange. She and Trixie were spending the holiday together. And you have to wonder a little bit on the timing of this. Because in the very beginning, we see Spike's wings. Then the rest of the episode, we don't. And you know this had to happen after the episode where the student six were all accused of wrecking the tree. Because that was before hearse warming. And we saw Acellus getting on the train. So interesting on the timing there. Also, we return to Rainbow Falls. And I love how they got Flim and Fam into this episode. I also love how Ember like instantly recognized one of the brothers. And I was like, hmm, he's suspicious. Then I see the other brother selling this stuff. I'm like, oh, it's Flim and Flam. And she's like, took you that long? Because it was kind of instantaneous. I'm like, oh, the Flim Flam brothers again. How are they commercializing and exploiting hearth warming? Oh, oh, they're the big retailers selling the It toy and driving up prices. I love the It toy and I love the how it has voice samples. That was that was great. The voice samples were awesome. Commercialism. Spend more money than you have to, basically. It was awesome. And I like how we saw them on the train with their stock and everything. That also reminds me, this episode was full of references, and I can't remember all of them. I just remember Home, un home Improvement. Home Alone. Home Alone. Elf. Oh, there was another one that I can't remember. It's like, there were so many in this episode. They were all in the background. A couple of them came back in the episode a couple of times. Like, Home Alone was actually there twice. So was Elf. But they just really touched on so many of the modern... Christmas frustrations, the long lines, the shopping, the decorating, the dealing with the postal service. <laughs> oh, that was great, Derpy. Mm -hmm. Uh, can't remember her official name right now, but Muffins, maybe? Muffins was what went on a lot of the clothing. I just can't remember her, her official name now. I know it's not Derpy. Did we get to keep Ditsy Do? Don't think so. Though, uh, that reminds me that Dr. Hooves? Yes. Was also in this episode. For a brief second. But he was there. And just the whole conversation between Rarity and Derpy was awesome. And 
the whole thing with Rarity going out to Sweet Acorn Acres, it it does not fit properly as Gifted the Magi, but it felt so Gifted the Magi. It so fit Rarity as well. How she like, oh, oh, but it works so well. I'm gonna leave it. And for Pistachio to fess up and go, yeah, I know you didn't mean to send this to me, so... She's like, no, darling, it's all right. <laughs> it's going to the right person, basically. Which is part of gift giving, and it's also part of her element of generosity. Though you have to wonder how quickly all of that came together, because they drew the names the day before. How did she have time to get the hat ordered? Because she didn't know she had Applejack until she drew the name. And it was a custom piece, and if, unless that person's, like, extremely quick... That was like less than 24 hours notice and less than 24 hours to actually make it. Also to have it delivered. I know magical post system and everything, but come on. Just a smidge unrealistic there. Yes, we're saying unrealistic in the show about the pastel colored ponies. <laughs> well, they do have their own rules. The thing is, how could everyone be that stumped? These are your friends. You were going to buy for all of them anyways. How do none of you have any ideas? Speaking of ideas, why didn't Rainbow Dash like go with her instincts and get the spa thing anyways? Because she obviously knows that Rarity and Fluttershy go to the spa. So that would have been a perfect gift. And with the stuff that Discord brought up, well, then you get the spa card for specific services. You can totally do that. Then you don't have to make a choice beyond when you would like to go. And she could have asked Rarity, like, so what does she usually get at the spa? Yes, because in this type of game, there's usually not a rule against asking for help. You just can't let the person whose name you drew know that you got them. Of course, if you're like my coworkers, they try to guess it all before we even get to ha bringing the gifts into the office. Yeah, your coworkers. I can't remember what their average is on guessing. Well, there's one particular person who's really good at figuring out who got who. And a lot of people are pretty good at guessing once they open the gift. And I love how Discord brought up the whole candle thing, because, yes, that used to be the thing, was candles. Now, apparently, it's scarves. Mm. If you get a candle or a scarf, the person had no idea what to get you. I thought that was a gift card. That's only if the gift card is to some place you don't like. Mm. Or one of those Visa gift cards. Yeah. They paid money in order to give you money. Really? You just spent money to give money. You just put cash in a card. I used to get 20s from my relatives in the mail during the holidays. Open up the card, 20 bucks. I'm good with that. And I know I said it a little bit earlier, but I didn't get through the whole list. They really got all the stressors, the postal service, the shopping, the cooking, the decorating, the getting ready for family to come visit. Awesome visit from the family in this episode. Shining armor, cadence, and the little one. Awesome. I love her little star outfit. That was cute. That was adorable. Absolutely adorable. Also, it wasn't just the visitors from the Crystal Empire. We also had Pinkie Pie's family. Oh, yeah, and that poor scene with... With marble. I was just like, aww. And everyone who rocked that ship just went, ah, she'll get him back. Or, cannon sink ships. Good thing I have this repair kit. <laughs> I'm going to write this fan fiction where those two break up and those two get together. My ship will continue. I've never been a shipper myself. Unless you count Ash and Misty and Tuxedo Mask and Sailor Moon. Tuxedo Mask and Sailor Moon is canon. That's not shipping. So yeah, I basically, I, I don't ship myself, but I can enjoy a good ship. Vinyl Scratch and Octavia. That's a good ship. <laughs> yes, and they were in this episode playing music. Yep. Once again in the background. And I believe her earphones were lighting up. You know, it's the holidays. And I also like how since Twilight was looking at Chancellor Puddinghead's recipe that we once again got to bring up a bit of the lore of the first Hearth Swarming. That Chancellor Puddinghead made this amazing pudding. 
after you know the first heart's forming. That apparently is really dangerous. How is that in the notes? I'm guessing Chancellor Puddinghead made a mistake one year and the pudding attacked everyone. Quite likely. Also, the reindeer. Past, present, and future. Because, you know, you can't have a holiday special that's making references without getting past, present, and future in there somehow. Even though we've already done that for house swarming with Starlight. Also, at least future reindeer wasn't scary. They were all bright and cute and cuddly and... Very nice. Mm -hmm. Also, I think our first official reindeer that was sentient. Because apparently there was a reindeer in the episode where Fluttershy had like a petting zoo. But now, sentient reindeer. Who are the best gift givers ever, according to Prince Rutherford? Who had to actually admit that yaks aren't best at something? This is probably why all yak holidays consist of smashing things. That reminds me of this great image I saw of a destroyed Ikea, uh, Ikea? Ikea. Ikea set, and they had a plushie of the female yak from the student six on top of it. And the caption was, am I doing it right? <laughs> I'm like, nice. But I like all the references back to the other holidays as well. Other versions of the holiday celebration. Like, is that pyre smashable yet? Basically. Like, is that really an optimal angle for smear whatever the heck? <laughs> you know, if it was well done in this episode too, I need to go and like look at the episode's credits again to see who wrote the episode. I have a feeling it's someone who's written for the series multiple times because the characters were well done. Nothing felt forced. And the most forced thing was Applejack and Fluttershy's script. But, you know, it had to sound fake because it has to be obvious to the audience that they're pretending. Oh, no. I've gotten these three identical gifts for three unique people. Shouldn't we all be shopping for the individual? <laughs> that was a rough summary slash reinterpretation of what they actually said. And the excellent of... Well, technically, they're not doing anything illegal. Yeah, we're going to stop them anyways. But we can't force people to not shop, you know, not buy from them. No, but we can explain why it's a bad idea. Also, I love how they were willing to put money down on it to make their point. I also love how Fluttershy goes, oh, I spent all of money. Can I borrow some train fare? <laughs> Once again, we're actually dealing with, like, them actually having a monetary system. Though it still brings into question of, like, jewels have what kind of value in this universe? Because they seem to have, like, lots of value, but then Spike eats them, and they just basically throw them around like they're worth nothing, but they have, like, great value? I don't get it. Because Rarity usually tips in gems. So, is she a really good tipper, or are those smaller gems that low of value? Because... When we had the Las Pegasus episode with Granny Smith and the other gals, the tip to the bellhop was a single coin. Just fascinating stuff. But maybe we'll make a special episode just on how the heck does the equestrian monetary system work? Heck, if we know. Episode done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that about sums it up. We don't get it. We know it's there because we see money change hands, but that's all we know. And back to the current episode slash special we're talking about that was shown in the wrong holiday. Why? It also had a really nice artistic feel to it. They, they captured that essence of the holiday. Because some shows like, we're talking about Christmas and they just show snow. And it doesn't really feel like the warmth of the Christmas season. This had that. The characters acted warm the sceneries were warm the music was fun the two songs you know they were really enjoyable yeah it was all really good i love how everyone was like i don't have rarity <laughs> the moment spec was like ah uh, i don't have rarity the only one who was like confused was fluttershy probably because she like assumes the best of everyone uh, considering she gave flim and flam all her bits and almost allowed them to talk her in again i love how he was like wait a minute Right after Applejack went, um, Fluttershy? Yes? Oh, wait. Dang it! So, 
by foiling Flim and Flam, Applejack didn't have time to pick up one of the two gifts she already had in mind for Spike that she brought over and showed to Fluttershy, which means that she took items from two separate booths without paying for them because she didn't have them to give to Spike. I mean, I know the Rainbow Falls trade fair and everything is, well, this was more the craft fair as opposed to the trade fair because no princess in residence and money was changing hands. It wasn't trades. I have a theory that maybe the booth was actually nearby at that particular time. So she was just taking a couple of steps over to show Fluttershy. But the likelihood of those items being at the same booth isn't very high. Mm. Also nice callback with the Powerpony's comic. Unenchanted, I think. <laughs> We're actually like a couple of minor callbacks in this episode to previous episodes, too. I can't remember all of them, but that just reminded me that there was some in there. I just can't remember the specific ones right now. Well, for one thing that they went back to Rainbow Falls, you know, from season four. Trade ya. Which brings up a fun fact. Try saying that to the Google Assistant. You'll get kind of a funny reaction out of her. Yeah, it's really funny if you aren't trying to do something else, like double check that that episode, the place they went, was called Rainbow Falls. Mm-hmm. Say, My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Trade ya into the Google Assistant, and she'll go, I'll remember that. I didn't ask you to remember it. I asked you to search for right. it. <laughs> Apparently it's like some weird glitch in the syntax causes her to go, I'll remember that. I'm like, okay. I know this happens because she was having issues with that. I was like, oh, it just might be her phone. Try it on my phone. Same thing. But more importantly, everyone got together for the holidays. And Twilight's family was very understanding about her being Twily Nana's. And pointed out, you could have just told us and we could have helped you. Yes, which is true, but you could have helped by keeping Flurry under control. Because it's Flurry's fault the pudding went wacko. Yeah. The the pudding was kind of more Twily Nana's than Twily. I do like how the solution was the MacGuffin that Pinkie Pie picked up as Twilight's present. It's like, but I don't know how to fix it with the right ingredients. You mean these things? Toss them in. How did you... I... Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it was actually kind of a little bit more dramatic than that. Oh, I have your present! Jump! Splish! Pinkie Pie! <laughs> the pudding's calmed down. See, I got this present from some magical reindeer. <laughs> and it was the exact ingredients you needed to solve the problem. Okay. I'm pretty fine with that. And I'll get the box you'll like. Ooh, it's a nice box. See, I told you. <laughs> uh, that reminds me of Steven Universe. Oh, Lars is going to be here. <laughs> the off colors with the slightly out of sync abilities. Good news, everyone! Steven's going to arrive! He's been here. Need to catch up on that show. And everything else. And we're going to the off-season, which means theoretically more time. But we're going into the holidays! <laughs> which means in reality less time. Just, just a little bit. What else would you like to go over? Well, Discord once again with his um, inclusion issues. How many times has that come up? Yeah, they need to like figure out some way to teach this boy to not basically throw a tantrum when he doesn't get invited to things. Because clear all the way back to the gala. Kind of a repeat thing. And there was that part one particular episode in this season where he threw a tantrum and got rewarded for it. Yeah, kind of an oops there on the message, people. Yeah. He really should have gotten like punished halfway through the episode, then redeemed himself by doing something to make up for to make up for what he did, then get rewarded. Instead of continuing to terrorize the students. Not a good lesson to teach kids. Complain, 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 and be annoying and endanger other people and get rewarded. But back to this colorful, wonderful, warm episode. With everyone meeting at Twilight's Castle. Every time I say that I keep thinking Eureka's Castle. I also remembered, dear, I can fly. <laughs> <laughs> the, Here, I'll do this. Uh, honey, I can fly. <laughs> I also like Shining Armor just parkouring his way up onto the balcony and uh, Caden's going, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> You're not so bad yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and it's amazing how much of a blush you can see on a pink unicorn. Quite. I like what you did there. 
There's gonna be a fan fiction written about that. <laughs> lots and lots of fan fiction. And if you don't want to read any of it, make sure to turn on the tag of block explicit. <clears throat> That's actually a handy feature to know on the internet period. Block explicit. Huh. Yeah, this is pretty now. <laughs> Think pleasant thoughts like Pinkie Pie making pudding. Cause she even says, next time leave the baking to me. Like, uh, yes, it went wrong, but Twilight did everything right. Also, I, I myself wouldn't jump to the conclusion that the perfect gift for Pinkie Pie is a food item. If she's like anyone who works in the food industry, they don't want anything to do with their particular profession once they're out of outside of work. But have you seen Pinkie Pie? Yeah, yeah, but I would have like done something party themed, maybe an upgrade to her party cannon so it can fire multiple. No wait, she already has that. You know, just something different than here's a baked good. Cause it has to be food. That wouldn't have been one of my circles for my diagram. It has to be fun. It has to be lighthearted. It has to be sincere. Maybe they'll bring a smile to her face. You know, like a lovely collage or photo book of all the fun stuff you've done together. I like that mirror for Starlight. Mm hmm something like that. Pinkie Pie would really appreciate something like that. She'd actually get a really big, probably smile and a little bit of tear in her eye if you did something like that for her. Mm -hmm. She's all about the whole friends thing. She's memorized everyone in town. Which, why was she having trouble with the gift then? Because we've seen the party cave. She knows Twilight doesn't like cheese. Specifically quesadillas. It is so cheesy. So with all of that information at her hooves, why did Pinkie Pie need to go to Yak Yakistan? Yeah, other than an excuse to have us get some reindeer, which were way up north. Well, I think the other reason was Pinkie Pie had picked out a perfect group gift, and now she was stuck on having to redo her entire thing because nobody else wanted to do group gifts anymore. Like, no, we're all just doing one. Oh, great, what am I going to do with these matching hats now? Save them for next year. What are you going to do with a thousand shower caps? Christmas presents? Uh, if you can name that reference, congratulations. You can name that reference. Uh, so yes, this was a very fun episode. It would be interesting if we ever saw the reindeer again. Yeah, it would be interesting. Or even just other sentient reindeer. But it would be interesting to see these specific reindeer because these are specifically the holiday MacGuffin variety. Everything else we saw, we could see at any other time. Like when we saw the elder pair at the Apple family celebration. How we saw burnt oak in the background in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. All of those are things you could see on a normal basis. How often are we going to see Christmas themed reindeer? Yes, I know I said Christmas and pony heart swarming, but come on, they were Christmas themed reindeer. Though they were specifically gift giving reindeer, so anytime gifts are given, they could technically be around for that. Yes, they could be involved if anyone else knows the location. Because right now, in canon, as far as anyone knows, only Prince Rutherford and Pinkie Pie know how to find them. Which doesn't really work, because if they're like the awesome gift givers, then. Who are they giving gifts to? I don't know. Maybe they kind of like do their own thing and then they magically give gifts to people at random. And if Shiny Armor, Cadence, and Flurry all came, where were their parents? Yeah, Twilight and Shiny Armor's parents. Why weren't they in this episode? Because it was a whole family thing. I mean, if your princess daughter-in-law and your son and your first grandchild are all going to be in the same location at the same time during a holiday. Why aren't you there? I didn't even think about that during the episode, because I'm like, I'm always excited to see Shining Armor and Cadence. Flurry Heart, even though she's cute, not so much. It's mainly because the whole introduction and, like, another alicorn. Like, do we really need another one? Oh, you're selling toys. That's okay. Though it was pretty much the same thing with Cadence, and we kind of got over that. Yeah. I mean, they had to do something with all those pink Celestias they made. 
It's kind of like how I think Princess Twy came from some of the early Princess Luna toys. Because I would see a Princess Luna toy and go, that's Twilight with wings. It was also nice that we got to see Celestia and Luna a little bit. Yeah, there was a lot of nice cutovers to other people from the series celebrating Hearthswarming. Though it's funny because on the first Heart Swarming, it was a huge deal that everyone always watches these plays. We've never seen them since. Nobody even mentions going to a play or having gone to a play or skipping the play to go hang out with friends and family. Hmm. Well, that may just be um, the writers not writing about it and not including it because that it could also just be for that episode that if the main six are involved in it, it has to be super important. So them saying that, oh yeah, this is the most important thing. Everyone always goes and watches these. They were all happening everywhere. And we don't even really see a troop of actors in the background or anything. Because yeah. I understand not showing the play again, because how many times can you rehash the same thing over and over? It's kind of an interesting thing that that wasn't in the background anywhere in any heartwarming episode ever. Was it even mentioned? In the um, tree episode with the student six? Not that I recall. Hmm. It would have been nice to like have it in the list of stuff that Ocellus uh -huh. was talking about. They usually do this play thing. I don't know what that play thing is, but let's do this. Or I could just have them like misinterpreting the play that Twilight wrote down. Or, oh, play. And they actually go play, not put on a play. I don't know when we're supposed to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's enough. Even edited down, this is probably going to be at least a good 25 minutes. Yep, I was just going to ask you for your final thoughts on it. Well, I've been very fragmented. This is like one of the least organized I've been. <laughs> well, I just really liked it. It was really warm to me. There was lots of nice references. I'm probably going to like watch again sometime because it was episodes that you can watch again it's very pleasant it's just next time i'm watching it will probably actually be in december i've watched it this early for the sake of the podcast but it's november thanksgiving thank you you're welcome and this has been our thoughts on my little pony french biz magic probably technically season eight holiday special best Gift ever. Sounds like something Pinkie Pie would say. Yeah, totally. But, you know, the real message was the best gift is friendship. You know, that maybe the best gifts aren't found in a store. Maybe the meaning of the holiday is something just a little bit more. Thank you. Yes, I butchered it deliberately to take out the word Christmas. You can still call me on which uh, quote I mangled. <laughs> oh, you made it to the outro? It's a heart-swarming miracle! No, but seriously, thank you. Especially if you're actually watching this in November. Because, yeah, that, that's dedication. So, yeah, the usual like, subscribe, share, watch more videos. Yes, I know some of you have been watching us for a while. Have you gone back and looked at the really old stuff? I don't know why I'm suggesting that. <laughs> it's cringe-worthy. It's great. If you like cringe... There's plenty of it there. Yeah. Also, did I say comments? Yeah, you can leave comments. And once you're ready to leave YouTube, we, we have links of places you can go that aren't YouTube. Like Lux's Art. Lux's Commissions. Lux's Patreon. Lux's Coffee. And my corner of Tumblr that is technically on Lux's Tumblr. <laughs> oh, let's see. Legal. Legality's nitty gritty, okay. Patreon starts out at one dollar, which gets you a monthly sketch and voting rights. More dollars, more rewards. Coffee works in increments of three, no strings, requires PayPal. Commissions, that's you paying for a huge chunk of Lux's free time in order to get something shiny in digital format. Commentary, questions, and communications are, as usual, free. As are your opinions. You are free to express them. Please be nice. I, I, I know we kind of rambled a lot this time, but it is a holiday episode. <laughs> Thanks again for listening.
Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive in the form of views, likes, comments, dialogues, suggestions, and of course financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.